And this is Josie McDaniel, and y'all thank you for your attendance. Everybody ready? <clears throat> Come on in. Come on, y'all. Tap him home to get right here. He will be there first. Come on. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very sad to announce, if you don't already know, that we have had uh, one, one victim, storm-related uh, fatality. That was Mrs. Amber Dawn Lee in Union County last night at about 940 on a highway that had a, a tree in the highway we were informed. She passed away, and our prayers and hearts go out to her family and loved ones, and we're mighty sorry. Chaplain? Please. First John 5 14 says this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will we have the petitions that we desire of him let us pray almighty and all wise God we thank you so very much for being consistent and faithful to us we give you glory today for everyone that is working toward a conclusion to this matter there's nobody like you anywhere. And we need you more now than we've ever needed you before. Families need you. First responders need you. Those of us that are caught in the grip of a storm, whether it's a natural storm or a spiritual one, we need you. So today, even those that have suffered loss, I pray now that you will dry their eyes and comfort them in that loss. You're able to do anything but fail. So right now, we give you glory because your credit is good with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 National Weather Service, John Quirello. Yes. Thank you, Governor. Uh, good afternoon. Heavy rains continue across northeast South Carolina uh, with catastrophic flooding still ongoing across much of southeast North Carolina this afternoon. Tropical storm Florence has weakened throughout the day and has maximum sustained winds of 40 miles an hour. The center of Florence is currently located about 40 miles south of Florence, South Carolina, uh, in Williamsburg County. It's still moving very slowly, only to the west at about three miles an hour. So it's really been a slow move since it came to South Carolina last evening. Looking at the uh, highest wind gusts we've seen so far in South Carolina, the highest we've still have uh, seen uh, is 61 miles an hour at Myrtle Beach International Airport and in Marion. And then after that, we have some 60 mile an hour reports in Florence and at the Grand Strand Airport. Uh, even over into the Midlands, 54 miles an hour at Shaw and 53 miles an hour down at Charleston in the Low Country. Uh, the tropical storm warning was canceled earlier this morning for the Charleston Tri County area, uh, but remains in effect elsewhere in the Grand Strand, PD, Eastern, and Central Midlands. Tropical storm force wind gusts of 40 to 50 miles an hour are still possible mainly into this evening in the tropical storm warning area. Uh, winds should then diminish on Sunday as remnants of Florence finally move northwest and out of the state. Uh, looking at observed rainfall amounts, uh, certainly North Carolina has had significant uh, uh, flash flooding and uh, rainfall amounts are very extreme up there. Uh, a lot of areas between 25 and 30 inches of rainfall and the highest we've seen so far is 31 inches in Oriental which is in Pamlico County. So. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of rainfall. For us, by no means is the risk for flash flooding over. In fact, additional rainfall amounts of 8 to 12 inches are expected from Rock Hill to Florence to Myrtle Beach and areas northeast of there, with an additional 2 to 6 inches expected farther southwest into the I-26 corridor. The potential for heavy rains will continue through tomorrow and into the first part of the upcoming week. There is still the potential for deadly flash flooding Again, in parts of the Grand Strand, PD, Midlands, and the upstate, where flash flood watches remain in effect. We expect major flooding over the next several days in the PD River Basin. That includes the Great PD, Little PD, Lumber, Waccamaw, and Lynch's Rivers due to rainfall occurring in the North Carolina watersheds. Residents are advised to take preparedness actions now and stay connected to local emergency management for evacuation guidance. We are continuing to monitor rainfall amounts across the state to assess additional flooding impacts. Thank you. 
Thank you, John. And ladies and gentlemen, as you know from the beginning, since we've been watching for this storm and hurricane, <clears throat> it has been most unpredictable. Well, what has been predictable and steady is our concern about the heavy rain and the flooding, and that is, is on course for what, what we have been anticipating all along. Uh, we have, this morning, at um, issued at 11 o'clock, I uh, removed the, the evacuation order for the evacuation zones in Charleston County, Berkeley County, Dorchester County, and for Edisto Beach, which had continued under the zone evacuation in Colleton County. That is, that they came out from under the evacuation order at noon today, Charleston, Berkeley, Dorchester, and Ed Edisto Beach. That means that the evacuation order is still in effect for evacuation zones in two counties, two counties only. That is Horry County, the zones there, and Georgetown County, the zones there. The school closures and the state office closures are still in effect in Horry County and Georgetown County. That is the entire county. Again, all school closures except those in Horry County and Georgetown County are now immediately returned to the local officials. All of these orders, of course, are done in close concert and constant communication with the state officials, the county officers, municipal officers, and the emergency personnel. Also, all state offices that have been previously closed all state offices previously closed will be open for business on Monday. So I'll say again, the evacuation order is still in effect for the evacuation zones, all of them, in Horry County and Georgetown counties, and that does not include the entire county, However, th those entire counties. However, the school closures and state office closures are still in effect in the entire counties of Horry and Georgetown. Again, all school closures except those in Horry and Georgetown counties are now, right now, immediately returned to the local school authorities and all state offices previously closed will be open for business on Monday. I want to say again this has been a exercise in professionalism by people all over this state, including volunteers and the citizens themselves. We've had help from nine different states, as well as President Trump's involvement of his administration has been as heavy as it's ever been in South Carolina. And we have a great team here in South Carolina. And now we will proceed on with reports from some of these team members, starting with General Livingston. Thank you, Governor. Uh, all of Team South Carolina is now turning towards wellness checks and doing reconnaissance for search and rescue. Uh, we'll be actively uh, patrolling the coast. Uh, DNR will be on the rivers. Uh, we already have our first flights from the Coast Guard and from the National Guard uh, uh, out looking to see if anybody needs any help. Uh, we are continue to coordinate with our Department of Defense, Homeland Security, and FEMA partners to uh, prepare for the floods that are coming and those consequences and we are repositioning other assets to be able to handle that. Uh, the, uh, I, th I think uh, as, as we look right now we've had no uh, calls for rescue and that is a, is, is a good thing because I think the governor's evacuation order helped that. We'd rather evacuate than rescue and even though the storm took a little bit of a turn to the north at the last minute, uh, the, the really telling piece is the citizens of South Carolina cooperated with that evacuation order, and so they did not put the rescuers or themselves in danger. So we appreciate that great cooperation. Governor. Thank you, General. Secretary Hall, Christy Hall, Department of Transportation. Thank you, Governor. Currently, there are no major issues on our highways across the state. The DOT crews in coordination with county governments and first responders worked overnight as well as today and are continuing to work to uh, clear up any uh, road closures that we may have in some of our smaller roads, get the debris out of the way and uh, do the work that we need to do to get everything restored. 
Our current major effort is to prepare, as the governor mentioned, for the floods that are coming. We have completed an analysis with our uh, partners at Department of Natural Resources, Corps of Engineers, National Guard, and others to look at our waterways. And in particular, the DOT team has identified four bridges that we are, have concerns with that are almost similar to the same bridges that we had concerns with with the uh, Hurricane Matthew. Those, those four bridges, we predict, will be overtopped by floodwaters sometime late on the 17th, possibly on the early 18th. Those are SC9, SC917, US501, and SC9 on Longs, as shown on the map to my right. Again, those are almost the exact same waterways that we had issues with in the previous event. We continue to analyze US 701, US 17 in Georgetown, and SC 22 Conway Bypass. Still work to come on those from an analysis standpoint. The governor has directed that we take every effort necessary in order to try to maintain at least one major highway access into the Horry County area. And our plan currently is to utilize US 378 into the Horry County area <coughs> and US 501 bypass around Conway <coughs> to get us over the Waccamaw River. That's our current plan. The team has collectively worked together with the Department of Corrections, Army, South Carolina Army National, South Carolina National Guard, and the Army Corps of Engineers to develop a plan. And that plan involves planning for a projected one foot overtopping of US 378 over the Lynch's River in Florence County. So we will protect that area. And what we will do is our plan is to go in and build an emergency uh, flood control uh, structure to basically divert the floodwaters away from the roadway in order to keep that roadway open. Continuing on towards ORE on 378, we expect no other issues on 378 other than that one area. Once you get into the Conway area, we're predicting some flood flooding in that area as well. So in order to get over the Waccamaw, as you go into ORE County towards Myrtle Beach, our plan is to protect US 501 bypass in Conway in order to get over the Waccamaw. Our current planning numbers and again, this is what we're planning for, is a projected three foot overtopping of US 501 bypass. So our plan is to build approximately 1.5 miles in length, a temporary flood control device in order to protect that highway, keep that highway open as much as we can. And of course, we're still doing some final coordination on that with the Department of Corrections, our, the National Guard, Corps of Engineers, and DHEC to look at all these items going forward. We also continue to analyze the impacts of these floodwaters as you head away from the PD area over towards I-95. There's several structures on I-95 that we're studying currently to determine if we're going to have any concerns there. Thank you. Thank you. Chief Mark Keel, South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. Thank you, Governor. All of the personnel, uh, state law enforcement personnel and National Guard resources in the central and southern conglomerates have now been demobilized. Those personnel are now available to be redeployed to the northern conglomerate, primarily those counties, Horry, Georgetown, Marion, and Dillon, but it includes all the counties in the PD area. I personally contacted all the sheriffs in the PD yesterday, talked with them about their needed resources, and have let them know that law enforcement will be in those affected areas as long as they need us. We will be there as long as any official needs us to be in those areas. This is what we do. We are there to support our local law enforcement partners and our public safety partners, as many of them have been working long hours away from their home and their families. I'm asking that citizens stay away from those storm damaged and flooded areas. Again, law enforcement will be out in force, patrolling these areas in vehicles, boats, and doing air patrols. Some of these areas are being patrolled as I speak. Again, as I've said each day, criminal activity in these areas will not be tolerated. Thank you. Thank you. Colonel Alvin Taylor, Department of Natural Resources. Thank you, Governor. Um, today, uh, 
we are still monitoring our our rivers and the Petey Basin. Uh, good news is we feel like the Black River now will be safe and not have, it may have minor flooding but not moderate flooding. So we're concentrating on the lumber, the Little PD, and the Waccamaw. So we're down to those three river systems that are part of the PD Basin. Um, we're expecting moderate to um, extensive flooding in those areas. We currently have personnel from SLED and DNR vehicles um, going into those areas, uh, adjacent to those waterways, um, letting people know that the, the flood waters are coming, let them see us to know that we're there, we're going to be there. Tomorrow morning we will start boating patrols on those waterways to help with any evacuations that might be necessary, but also to provide a presence, a safety presence as well as a law enforcement presence. Um, a, a, a good note is we will continue to map. The mapping has worked well. Um, we've had some good real-time mapping from water uh, rainfall from North Carolina, so it's helped us to send our resources where they were needed most, and we will continue that as long as the rain is falling. Governor, that's all I have. Thank you, Colonel. Director Leroy Smith, Department of Public Safety. Thank you, Governor. Yes. Uh, as the Governor stated, uh, we have one confirmed storm-related death, Union County on, on SC-18. Uh, vehicle struck a tree that was blown across the roadway from the heavy uh, winds and rain. Uh, the victim, uh, female, 61 years uh, of age. And uh, again, our, our thoughts and prayers go to the, uh, the family members of the victim. Uh, our troopers and officers are out patrolling the roadways, uh, looking for down power lines, uh, trees, debris in the roadway, investigating collisions and looking for any other roadway hazards. Uh, we are prepared to assist the Department of Transportation with road closures and diversion routes. Uh, we are in the process of providing escorts for the National Guard, Department of Transportation, and FEMA, their vehicles that will be en route to the PD area. And last, uh, we are in the process of assigning troopers to ESF-13, that's with the uh, State Law Enforcement Division, to assist the Ori County Police Department with line patrol and to have a strong law enforcement presence to prevent looting. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Joan Meacham, Director of the Department of Social Services. Thank you, Governor. As of 2 p.m., there are currently 5,796 people in shelters across the state of South Carolina. There are 80 total shelters open in support of this event. We have a capacity in our shelters of 46,860. We are currently at 12% occupancy. That's down from 14% this morning. So we have space for an additional 41,063 individuals in shelters. Of the 80 shelters that are open, 67 are general population, and three of those are full. 13 are special medical needs shelters, and, five, and eight of these are full. <coughs> Just some general information points. We currently have six shelters that are, are operating on generated power. Those are three in Marion County, one in Dillon, two in Ork and Oree. These locations have plenty of fuel, fuel, water, and food, and we're in constant contact with these shelters. Over the last 24 hours, the National Guard has distributed 6,696 cots in order to ensure that we are meeting the needs of our clients. They are currently adi uh, delivering additional cots as needed. We have no reports from our volunteers of any food issues in the shelters. We are now making plans to move from a hurricane evacuation situation to a flooding event. Now that the evacuation orders have been lifted in the counties that the governor announced, we're working to release these locations back to the local school districts. Local decisions will be made to shift resources into the shelters and we should be consolidating some of the sheltering services. 
question, how many schools are being used for shelters in Ori and Georgetown counties? Uh, I can uh, get that back. I don't have the specific list. Is it eight in Ori and I two in it was Georgetown? Eight, that's right. It was eight in Ori and two in Georgetown. That is correct. And out of the 67 uh, general populations, 65 of those were located in schools. Okay. All right. Thank you, Thank, you, thank you, ma'am. David Wilson, Department of Health, Environmental Control. Thank you, Governor. As reported earlier, uh, DHEC conducted uh, assessments of 262 dams before the storm. As the rains continue, with the help of the State Guard, we are keeping visual observations on 27 of those dams. Um, we are already partnering with the U.S. Corps of Engineers to go out Monday after the storm has passed to see if there was any damage that needs to be addressed at those dams. For the areas where the evacuations have been lifted, we are now working with the various health care facilities in those areas to ensure that there were no damage to those facilities so that the patients and residences, residents can return to the various hospitals, nursing homes, and assisted living facilities that were evacuated. Thank you. Thank you. Director Nanette Evans, Edwards, of Office of Regulatory Staff. Thank you, Governor. Yes, ma'am. Um, First, an update on the outages. Uh, as of 8 a.m. this morning, our peak outage for today was 171,899. Um, I'm pleased to report that that number has steadily dropped throughout the day. And as of 2.15, it was 118,833. Uh, with regard to fuel, we have been messaging to our fuel partners to, when it's safe to do so, go ahead and get their trucks out on the road. In particular, we have emphasized that they should take available supplies to Horry County before any potential flooding occurs. While the storm is not over, we do expect to see fluctuation in the outage numbers. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you and give and show our deep appreciation to our utility and fuel partners for all their hard work. And I think the numbers and the drop of the outages certainly reflect that the utility crews are doing their best. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Director Kim Stinson of the Management <coughs> Division. Thank you, sir. Uh, in terms of the response uh, and priorities here at the State <coughs> Emergency Response Team, they remain the same. Uh, we continue sheltering operations and initial response to include uh, the flood, uh, flood operations. And then also continuing to do the uh, initial damage assessment and the final reentry. Uh, at the local level, we've got 33 county emergency operations centers that are currently open, uh, but we expect that number to drop here over the next day or so. In terms of county impacts, um, there was no major damage reported so far, but there is limited residential damage and, of course, road debris, primarily in the PD area. Power is the main issue in the PD area, uh, with at least five county emergency operation centers right now operating on emergency power, and that was Dillon, Florence, Marion, Lee, and Williamsburg. In terms of the follow-on flood operations, uh, there's a distinct possibility, as we've discussed earlier, that some counties may become isolated, some por portions of some <coughs> counties may become isolated uh, due to the flood water, as we, we may see in the, in the future and in starting as early as uh, early next week. So we're doing two things. One is we're coordinating with the counties to pre-stage food, water, fuel, and as well as sandbags and flood barriers in those areas that may be isolated uh, in advance of those flood waters. And we're also coordinating with the counties for individual points of distribution, and that's where uh, citizens can receive delivery of food and water and they'll be in multiple locations and right now we're looking at a possibility of 22 different locations. In terms of the requests that we've had, we've had uh, 772 requests from the local authorities. We've got 644 that are complete uh, or in progress. As the, the governor mentioned, we've got personnel from nine states uh, that are assisting with the, uh, with the response. Uh, and that's uh, right now it's almost 400 people that are from out of state that are here helping. And then the last point is just another reminder of our public information phone line uh, up there on the, on the screen that uh, you can still call in if you've got any questions, any citizens uh, about any issues. But again, it's not a 911 number. And then lastly, uh, 
stay tuned to SCEMD.org, our website that's got all kinds of good links to keep you connected. And then for those of you that have downloaded our, our app, the South Carolina Emergency Manager app is also uh, is live and working. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Are there any questions for anyone? Any idea of the breakdown for evacuees, like how many would be returning to the counties that that border was lifted from? I think I've got it right here. I hope so. Um, we're in the in the uh, northern conglomerate. Uh, there was probably about two hundred thousand people should have evacuated. What is the Norman? The and, northern conglomerate. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good question, sir. Uh, that's the uh, George Georgetown and Ori. And I don't know if you have a number on the evacuated number. On yeah, it's that. close to that same number. It's close to the yes. same number. Yes. Okay. And the counties that indicated that they thought they had. Uh, pretty high compliance in the Georgetown and Ori area for that. Yes, sir, that's correct. Can you kind of explain, and for those areas where you lifted the evacuation or time, the process of making that decision since we possibly are still Yes, it, it is, well, of course, it, it, as we know, this is a hurricane event followed by a flood event. And all the decisions that you have heard announced here and that were, were made and some not announced have been made with close consultation and collaboration throughout this process with the municipal and county officials at every level, as well as state legislators, as well as our U.S. senators and congressional delegation. This has been a, a full team effort uh, by South Carolina with, of course, the help of, as you know, President Trump and his administration. And this, everything that is, all the talent and resources that are out there have been brought to bear on this. Governor McMaster, you said you've spoken with President Trump, you know, the past several days, but um, are there going to be disaster funds available or what yes, all has he said? We, we have, uh, they, they have, he has said they would do whatever it takes to see that everything is available for South Carolina and we've made application for everything that is available for South Carolina. This might yes, be sir. for, this might be for DHEC, but um, are there any specific concerns that any dams might breach because of the flood waters? If so, where are they? Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Governor. Uh, as it relates to dams that the state regulates, and uh, keep in mind, the state regulate does not regulate lake dams. Those are regulated by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. But for those middle-sized dams that DHEC regulates, uh, we do not have any concerns at this point, but we're continuing to evaluate based on data provided by DNR and our own uh, in-house experts. Anything on that? Yes, sir. Thanks, yes, sir. Governor. I'd like to also make note that that this year um, our large utilities um, uh, were very proactive, and that's one of the reasons through the Midlands of the state where we have traditionally seen minor flooding after large rain events, our large utilities were ahead of the game this year, releasing water ahead of the, of, of the heavy rainfall so that those lakes could hold water. Um, they were holding area for for rainwater that was runoff that was going to those lakes and because they were very proactive and started that release of water early on that helped with some of the um, situation you may have had where they had to release water at the last minute so by working with Duke and SENG and Santee Cooper and our large reservoirs and, and letting water go ahead of time it, it sort of served as a holding pot for for rainwater and it was extremely important to help mitigate the flooding downstream. So they were proactive on helping lower Very much so, yes, yes. Speaking yeah, of that, was Lake Busby um, lowered? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, I'm was sorry. Was Lake Busby among those that were lowered by Sandy Cooper? Do you like, you can, you can talk about it. Mr. Wilson? Thank you, and, and let me follow back up on the other dams as well. And the rains are continuing. That's why we're continuing to provide that surveillance and, and with help from the state guard. So as you keep hearing, the rains are, are still happening, and we still want to make sure that those dams that we're looking at stay safe. As it relates to Lake Busby, there's not been actions with Lake Busby, but for the impoundments that manage material that were associated with Santee Cooper there, we're working with Santee Cooper, staying in close communication with them as they take efforts to make sure that those impoundments stay secure and that there is not a problem. They're continuing to watch the rising river levels uh, and taking actions necessary for that. 
Governor, have you, yes, have you personally asked the president to expedite those funds for the Columbia Canal repairs? If not, why? Uh, I have, he, he has offered to expedite everything that the federal government can do, and that is why we have had much attention and communication with virtually every cabinet official repeatedly. Has that been specifically uh, mentioned in there, though? As if, far as that every, every problem we have is has been covered so by his every problem that we have every contingency has been addressed what has been the biggest difference in the conditions that we're seeing in Ori and Georgetown County that those folks are still under the evacuation order compared to the other ones it's the it's the flooding as, as we have known from the very beginning as the storm turned into a hurricane and came ashore that there was if you, you've seen on television the graphics of all the rain falling in North Carolina as well as in South Carolina, record amounts of rainfall me measured in feet in some places and, and not inches. And some of those rivers in North Carolina flow right down into South Carolina. So not only are those rivers swelling based on the water falling on South Carolina, but we're having water from North Carolina as well. Same thing uh, across the state. So that, that is, is what is bringing up this um, possibility or, or actuality of, of flooding in those areas uh, more so than in other parts of the state. Uh, Ms. Hall, can you give us more details on what DOT is doing to keep those two highways free of flood water heading into Horry and Myrtle Beach? Yes, thank you. So the, the, uh, the team's been working very hard over the last several days. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, a lot of analysis is being done with uh, the Department of Natural Resources, State EMD, the National Guard, and the Army Corps of Engineers to look at actual rain data to try to and use that to project and help us plan for which roads will overtop. So we take that data, compare it to our roadway data, look at our bridge elevations, and look at the causeway or the road leading up to the bridge and study all those items to determine where the road could potentially overtop. And so by doing that analysis based on currently available data to us, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we've predicted that US 378 at Lynch's River, without some sort of action on our part, could potentially overtop by one foot, the causeway itself. And so in order to protect that and ensure that we try to provide at least one major roadway into Horry County uh, to be able to move people and goods back and forth, we will construct approximately one mile in length a flood control structure to hold back those flood waters and divert them away from the from the causeway from the roadway itself as you move into 501 at the bypass there in conway similar situation again we're looking at the approaches in that area the same situation applies this time instead of a one foot overtopping we've projected or planning for about a three foot potential overtopping of the roadway and so in order to protect that we're planning to build about a 1.5 miles in length flood control structure again to keep the flood waters off of the roadway and maintain that roadway access into the area how quickly can those structures be in place we are currently working with uh, department of corrections the uh, National Guard and the Corps of Engineers to get all those materials resourced. Uh, several quarries have opened to help us uh, pull sand out of those areas. The county is very much engaged as well, basically getting all the materials on site. Uh, materials are currently moving. We expect to have our first deliveries on site this afternoon, late, late this afternoon, with a big push tomorrow, as long as we need to, possibly into a little bit on Monday. Uh, in order to make sure that both of those protective devices are in place by Monday night uh, when the night falls. So that's our plan. So a lot of work, a lot of activity from a lot of different team members uh, all across the state to, to make this happen, including the county government, tomorrow and Monday so that we're ready and prepared. Thank you. Getting some messages from our sister stations. Any time in Myrtle Beach, any time frame on when those evacuations in Ori and Georgetown may be lifted? That will, that will depend on the facts, as has every other decision that we've made. The data and the facts and the recommendations uh, of the local authorities as well as, as others. Governor, now that we've had the first fatality, would you say being on the roadways is gambling with your life? Well, it, 
anytime you have a storm or a hurricane or a flood or, or even just just high water, it's it's always dangerous. We must always be careful, e even if there are not emergency declarations and evacuations. We must always be very careful. This may be for Chief Gill. Have there been any reports of looting or robberies in any of the evacuation zones? There have not been. We've not heard anything. And like I say, I talked to all the sheriffs in the PD region yesterday personally, and they have had no concerns with regard to that at this point. Again, we're going to be out in force with law enforcement protecting these areas that's been evacuated. How about curfews while you're at the podium? How many places are under curfew? There are added from yesterday. I think I have them here. Uh, we have curfews now. Uh, Ori. Georgetown, again, the town of Andrews, Colleton, well, no, Colleton is, is done. Marion County, Dillon County, Florence County, Chesterfield County, Darlington County, Marlboro County, and Williamsburg County. We have curfews in those areas. And that means people can't be out after 6? So uh, well, the times are different on some. Some are 7 till 8 o'clock in the morning. Some are 6 till 6 o'clock in the morning. Other questions? Well, y'all, thank you very much. And again, our hearts and prayers go out to the family of Ms. Amber Dawn Lee, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.